God, ask that your Holy Spirit speak through me. Ask it in your name and for your sake. Amen. Built in 70 AD by the Roman Emperor Vespasian, the Roman Colosseum was a way to keep people of Rome entertained and distracted from what the government was doing behind the scenes and to quell any ideas of uprisings. This is the purpose of arenas and the media today to distract people from what the government is doing behind the scene. Slowly taking away our freedom of speech, our First Amendment and Second Amendment rights, distracting us to arenas, streaming services, the media, while behind the scenes working with the United Nations to attack the Constitution in ways our forefathers couldn't have envisioned. The Constitution was never meant to protect against a threat global power from outside changing our nation from the outside part of a one world government controlled through the United Nations. In this sermon you're going to hear things that will soon affect the future of you and your family in coming times such as these that are coming. Psalm 146.3 says that you're not to trust in man in whom there is no help but instead if you haven't done so already you need to confess your sins Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior so that you are taken up in the rapture and are not left behind to live in times that the forefathers of this country could not have foreseen. Times in which the nations as you know them will go away and the world will be ruled by an antichrist who will kill people, who will not take his mark, a false prophet who will cause people to worship the image of the beast an image, the infrastructure of which is, I believe, being laid by emergence of AI and quantum computing. These people have been given more and more power by nations, such as the United States. And while mainstream media paints certain nations as enemies, or enemies, just as you see politicians of different parties shaking hands with each other in candid photos, you see nations painted as enemies by your media meeting annually and planning your future or our future at the United Nations and note that presidents regardless of their party have endorsed a new world order which is controlled by the United Nations World Economic Forum and other similar organizations while they have you distracted while they have you distracted on arenas and media they the United Nations WEF and other unelected officials funded by elites who put the politicians in office are laying out an agenda for people left behind after the rapture called Agenda 21, a world where populations will be reduced by 90% or more and the majority of the remaining population will be relocated to human settlement zones and cities, a totalitarian dictatorship ruled by AI and controlled by licenses and data, a global reset in which you will own nothing and will be forced to take a mark to buy or sell. And day by day the book of Revelation is playing out. Governments are being consolidated into a, a United Nations led New World Order, one day ruled by the Antichrist, while people are sleeping, family Bibles dusty, or homes and schools have kicked out God in prayer and the Bible all together in exchange for arena entertainment or the next media thing put in front of their eyes by actors. People are celebrated and made rich because they are able to pretend to be someone they're not. The people I'm going to show you below are the scaffolding for the one world government of the Antichrist and their power is growing and you can see evidence of their power by how they are able to cancel via the cancel culture culture remove from ballots and find presidential candidates in America and other places who don't fit in with their agenda. The next part of this sermon is excerpts of their plans for those remaining in the world after the rapture. Last month the world's elites and other so-called stakeholders gathered in the normally sleepy Swiss town of Davos to plan the future without input from us plebs at the World Economic Forum's now infamous annual conference. Below is a summary of some of the things said at the annual conference or rather the ones that the public were allowed to hear. This conference as always began with remarks from the WEF 
President Lorga Brenda and its founder and executive chairman Klaus Schwab. Klaus founded the WEF so so-called stakeholders, leaders of nations and others could meet to plan the future of the world. Borga stressed that global cooperation was required to address truly global issues. Then following a bunch of global buzzwords, Borga stood down and Klaus stood up. He said that the purpose of the WEF's programs is to drive global transformation and he acknowledged that this transformation will be disruptive to the average person. Hmm. I don't remember voting for these programs, by the way. On that note, Klaus underscored the fact that the risks are, as he said, quote, centered on the individual and national level, unquote. In other words, the interests of individuals and countries are causing issues, in his mind, for the West's programs. Klaus goes on to say that this is a problem because Quote, we are responsible for advancing the world, unquote. When he says we, he doesn't mean you and me, he means the stakeholders at the WEF. Klaus wants national leaders to redirect people to set aside their individual goals and redirect them to support collective goals, ones set by the WEF. This is why some have noticed America becoming more totalitarian. Klaus then thanked the Swiss Army and the Swiss police for protecting those at the conference from the plebs that is the everyday, that is the everyday ordinary citizen at Davos and invited Swiss President Viola Amberg to speak. She spent her time calling for the United Nations to be strengthened. If you have studied who controls the world today, it actually seems to be the UN now that the WEF has partnered with the UN to ensure that the latter's Sustainable Development Agenda 21 goals are met in every nation by 2030. Viola went on to say that quote-unquote fake news, that is news that the WEF doesn't want to spread, is a blocker to their goals. Hence calling for digitizing everything so that the WEF, UN, and stakeholders can totally control the flow of information to the masses. She said that the masses are not fans of the WEF because of what she called plain old populism. It's not, in her mind, the truth that the elites at Davos are planning global policies that will remove the rights of the average person. Nope. She said in her speech, it's populism, the rights of the ordinary person. And she called on the corporations to stop populism. Not only that, but she insisted that the WEF is not at the mercy of populism and that populism must be stopped, the rights of the ordinary person must be stopped, according to her. Kathy Lee, head of the WEF's Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, announced that the WEF is building an AI that will align and enforce the UN's aforementioned Sustainable Development Goals, or STGs. The STGs include things like the creation of digital, digital IDs, smart cities, and central bank digital currencies, all dystopian technologies that I have covered in other videos. The WEF famously said, speaking of the Great Reset, they're promoting that we will all own nothing and be happy by 2030, unquote. Hmm. Sustainable Development, Agenda 21, and the Great Reset is, quote unquote, their greater good. America and other countries in the Western world are abandoning freedom for collectivism, one of the pillars of communism. Note also that the WEF is controlling corporations through ESGs, Environmental, Social and Governance Directives, where a corporation cannot get a government central bank loan to expand or operate unless they support the WEF's Sustainable Development Agenda 21 policy. There was another WEF discussion at the conference against freedom of speech, which was called, quote-unquote, protecting democracy against bots and plots, using, using these words, in this case, to crack down on legitimate dissent. According to the moderator, misinformation and disinformation are the greatest threats according to the WEF, and misinformation and disinformation according to them is any information which the WEF doesn't want people to know. One of the commentators said that, quote-unquote, trusted information must be promoted. 
meaning the information that gets the West STGs must be censored, implying that clamps must be put on the internet, one of the last bastions of free speech. They want voting, social media activity, phone and other activity to be closely monitored by world governments, as is already the case in places like China and India. The common theme of the conference seemed to be as addressed in another panel discussion that the outcome of all the national elections of nations in the world align with the West goals. The attendees at this year's Davos conference seem to have one thing in common, that they all that they were all mortified at the possibility that Donald Trump could become U.S. President again later this year. That's because they know that he would defund the WEF and the UN. The WEF doesn't want it to happen. Just recently, George Soros, the billionaire and influencer, has poured millions into Texas in hope of flipping the state Democratic in the 2024 election. Mark Leonard, director of the European Council on Foreign Relations, summed up the opinion of the WEF when he had this to say during a panel discussion. Quote, the 2024, the 2024 U.S. election will have a global impact and the, technocratic imp and the technocratic imperative, that is the will of the WEF and its allies, is being stopped by populism. That is by the will of the people who support candidates the WEF hates. I believe to protect our right to freedom of speech, religion, and expression, it is, good, it is a good idea to vote for people who oppose the WEF for the reasons above.